Here we go, starting with a fresh slab of American chestnut, breaking it down to get ready for our river pour. I'm running it through the planer to get it a little closer to my pour depth before I begin. I'm using Moss Epoxy's Tabletop Pro. I'll explain later why it's the perfect resin for this project. Here I'm prepping a bit of resin for what will be the underside of this coffee table. This American chestnut has quite an open grain with lots of voids to be filled. I use these little syringes to fill voids without wasting too much resin. I decided to treat the bottom of these pieces individually so that I can run them through my 18 inch wide planer before doing my river pour. So here I am back at the workshop running the individual pieces through the planer so I can level the bottom and get going on our pour. Doing your river pour on melamine is a must. If you have any leaks, it will peel right off. The optional tape on top just makes your project a little bit easier to peel off in the end. Okay, so now we're prepping for the pour. This is an easy, hassle-free formwork build that doesn't require flipping things upside down, screwing in from the bottom. It's the way to go. Trust me and works like a charm. See the link in my description for a video that I've previously made for exactly how to put these taped formworks together. But I do like to use red tuck tape for my formwork just so I can see exactly where I have tape and where I don't. The last thing you want to do is miss a spot. All right, now I'm using white silicone caulk to create a seal around my river pour so that it doesn't creep. Yeah, just creeping all night down low. You get it, under my slabs. We don't want it to creep. While the caulk is still wet, I'm measuring positioning of my slabs before I clamp everything down. If you learn anything from me today, wrap your clamp blocks in tuck tape. Use a bit more of this white caulk to seal the ends of your slab and you'll have a perfectly sealed river ready to be poured. Now I need to figure out the volume for this river pour, so I'm going to Moss Epoxy's website to use their handy dandy, how much will I need tool. Just input your length, width, and thickness, and boom, it tells you exactly how many ounces you need for your pour. See, voila. Something else I've learned about this thicker tabletop resin is pouring onto a stir stick down into your mixing tub reduces air bubbles big time. Stir slowly and carefully until clear, making sure to scrape the sides. I'm using Tabletop Pro for this project because it's perfect to pour in quarter inch layers. You can use nearly any colorant to tint this tabletop resin. Here I'm just using some very inexpensive acrylic paint from the craft store. More mixing. Mix, mix, mix. Just call me Miss Mix-a-Lot. I'm darkening this a bit with my favorite pinata alcohol ink in Mintilla Black, but you could even just use more acrylic. Don't forget to scrape the sides. Okay, now the fun part. Yes! This is the most satisfying part, the first pour. Flow, baby, flow. Be careful not to burn the resin, but you have to torch those air bubbles out because, ew. After that bottom river pour has cured for about five to six hours, I do another layer of clear on top so that the design I'll draw next sort of floats above the bottom green. 24 hours later, I'm breaking down the clamps because the resin is cured enough that it can do the work to hold the slabs down for me. Busted out my favorite Posca paint pens next. Here I'm just freehanding a design that's kind of become my signature, so I encourage you to do the same. Find your style and commit. I call this a celestial overlay. What's nice about these paint pens is that while it's wet, it's really easy to correct your mistakes. Whoopsie doopsie. All better now. And back to business. Now I'm mixing up my next layer for my river, as well as a little bit to fill those grainy, porous openings in the top of this American chestnut. I decided to fill with a little green because detail is fun and I'm using my finger to just kind of push the resin down into these tiny little openings. I'm pouring a clear coat on top of what I previously painted so that the next layer of hand-painted detail kind of floats above what's already there. Be careful not to scrape what you already painted while doing this. Per use, pop, pop, pop those air bubbles. This client wanted a specific astrological sign incorporated into their celestial overlay, so that's what I'm doing here. Be sure that your river is fully cured before putting anything down on top of it, like taping this design or inserting the graphite paper to transfer your design. If it's not cured, 
anything you put down will stick and you will have a disaster. See, peels right off. And the graphite paper leaves you with a faint transfer of your design. From here, I'm just connecting the dots of what I just drew and I will freehand the rest. I'm paying attention to composition, scale, overall design. Make it unique, give it a signature touch, but don't forget to pop the air bubbles. Okay, now I'm ready to pop this project up off the melamine with the tape down, it's really easy to release. Another huge pro tip, look up a local furniture maker in your area and see if they're willing to prorate you time on their drum sander. This will save you hours. Now I'm back in the workshop and I've got a rough template design that I've made and I'm going to freehand the shape of this mid-century inspired kidney shaped coffee table onto the project. Now I'm taking my handy dandy jigsaw and I'm going to cut this shape out by hand. It's so easy. Who says girls can't use power tools? Look at me go. I had so much fun cutting this out. Look at her. So proud, my baby. Now I've moved into the sanding portion of this project, which as you know, is the most tiring. You can't skip any grains. I start from 60 and I go in increments all the way up to 2000. I'll list more details in the description below. Just keep sanding. This client wanted to add one layer of walnut stain on the American chestnut, so I'm being very careful to keep it on the wood and not the resin because shocker, the stain will stain. After that's dried, I'm using a natural oil wax based water repellent finish on the entire thing and bring out our river. Look at it and look at him. That's Cosmo. So proud of how this kidney shape turned out. In keeping with the mid-century theme, we're adding some hairpin legs and voila. How perfect is this mid-century table in this mid-century house for my mid-century client? I can't wrap my head around how cool this is. Build it, enjoy, and have fun. Life is good. Okay, that's it. If you liked what you saw, please do me a favor. Like, subscribe, and comment below. Help support my biz and push my content to other viewers. If you didn't like what you saw, then just don't worry about that part. Just, just go. Just go.